God's kingdom is great. And it's the greatest kingdom there has ever been. It will be the greatest kingdom there will ever be. It couldn't be any better. Hi, I'm Dave Early, and this week we've been talking about the kingdom of God. If you missed the other videos, I encourage you to go back and watch them on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. And if you haven't subscribed, you can do that today. Well, we're talking about the kingdom of God, and I want to tell you, God's kingdom is great. Now, all of us live in countries where the government isn't always great. There are humans in control. Humans make bad decisions, poor decisions. Humans fight with each other. Humans uh, don't follow what's best for everybody. They get caught up in their agenda. And so we have messed up kingdoms. Every kingdom that has ever been on this earth has been flawed. It's been messed up because humans are flawed and messed up. But there's coming a king. Jesus, who's going to establish a kingdom, is going to be amazing. It's going to be the greatest kingdom ever. Let me tell you several reasons why it's so great. It's going to be the longest lasting kingdom. No kingdom on earth has ever lasted a thousand years, yet the kingdom of God is going to last a thousand years and then extend on into eternity. It's going to be the longest lasting kingdom of all time. It's going to cover the greatest territory. Uh, there have been kingdoms that have covered large areas of, of continents. But think about it. The kingdom of God is going to cover not just a whole continent, but the whole earth. The entire earth, plus I believe everything in the universe, will be under his domain. It's going to have the greatest territory. It's going to have the greatest peace. The peace of God will rule and reign in the heart of every person in the kingdom of God. In the, in, in the families of every family in the kingdom of God, in, the, in the, the, the whole way we get along with each other, all throughout the, the, the territory that God is ruling, which is the whole earth, there will be peace. This has got kingdom of peace on earth and goodwill to men. Well, it's going to have the greatest prosperity. No one's going to be hungry in the kingdom of God. No one's going to not have clothes. No one's not going to have food. There will be abundance. There will be prosperity. Uh, it will be, we will be rich as the children of the Most High God. It's going to be amazing. Think about it. Just, just the New Jerusalem will have streets of gold and gates of pearl. And that's just a, a, a description of just how amazing it's going to be. It's going to be a place of prosperity. No one will go hungry. No one will not have enough. No one will be sick. No one will be suffering. Got great prosperity, great harmony. This passage in Isaiah 11 is fascinating. It's talking about the kingdom of God, and it says, The wolf will lie down with the lamb, the leopard with the goat, the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling will all be together. A child will lead them. It says, The cow and the bear will graze with their young. They will lie down together. The lion will eat straw like an ox instead of eating other animals. An infant will play beside the cobra's pit. Uh, no one will harm or destroy on my entire holy mountain, for the land will be as full of the knowledge of God as the sea is filled with water. Greatest harmony imaginable. Well, why is all this going to happen? How is this all going to happen? Well, it's because this kingdom is going to have the greatest king. The absolute greatest king you can possibly imagine. Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. I, I love Revelation chapter 19. I'm going to read verse 9 first. It says, I heard something like the voice of a vast multitude, the sound of cascading waters, like the rumbling of loud thunder saying, Hallelujah, because the Lord our God, the Almighty, has begun to reign. And then it says in verse 11, I saw the heaven opened and there was a white horse. Its rider was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. So Jesus is coming to defeat his enemies. He's coming, first he came as a savior. Next, he's coming as a warrior. He's coming as king, the warrior king. 
and he will judge and make war. His eyes are like a fiery flame. On his head are many crowns. He had a name written that no one knows except himself. He wore a robe stained with blood. Think about it. His blood for our sins. His name is called the Word of God. The armies that were in heaven followed him on white horses wearing pure white linen. I'd like to be one of them. From his mouth came a sharp sword, so that with it he might strike the nations. He will shepherd them with an iron scepter. He will also trample the winepress of the fierce anger of God the Almighty. Listen, and on his robe and on his thigh he had a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. God's kingdom will be fully realized on this earth when King Jesus is fully worshipped as King of kings, Lord of lords. He will be the boss. He will be the leader. He will be the one who's revered, followed, obeyed. And as we do that, it will be truly heaven on earth. So this is our greatest hope. Now we get to experience bits of the kingdom of heaven as, as people declare Jesus as Lord, as Jesus' lordship is experienced in more and more areas of their lives, as groups of people uh, experience Jesus as Lord together. We get to experience taste of the kingdom of heaven, but it's going to be fully realized one day, and that is our greatest hope. Life may be hard. Maybe, maybe you're hungry. Maybe you don't have enough. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're in a place filled with conflict. Maybe it's a dark place. Maybe it's a discouraging situation. I want you to know there is hope today because there is a king named Jesus and he is coming and he's coming very soon to establish the greatest kingdom in history.